Hi there guys and welcome back to another episode of Pillars of Eternity. Um, in our previous episode we started this quest where we helped this uh, baby. Uh, uh, sacrificial bloodlines. Um, so my options here is I can poison the dad. I can deliver the baby. Um, either way, the one is saving the baby, the one is dam damning the baby to get uh, his uh, soul extracted and the essence goes into this uh, this guy, which I do not want to do. I actually want to save the baby. I do not know how we're going to do this because every time I speak to the guy, he attacks me. So I might actually have to wipe out his whole tribe, but I am going to save it before I do it. Because if it's going to have too much of a, a too big of a repercussion, I'm not... I'm not going to do it. I would like to talk my way out of it. Um, because it's a whole clan that will die. Because I will slaughter them, obviously. I'm just that good. Um, but let's see what we can do to not turn this into a shit show. Um, if, however, this does turn into a shit show, I want my party... Something like that, mm -hmm. with me standing there. Okay. Hey. Let's go. Lotus has asked me to kill you. Uh, just hang on, guys. I've got a call. Let's go. 
And that's how it's done. I'll teach you a- It's done. <clears throat> Looks like it hurt. I'll get the next one. So that's how it's gonna go? Come on, not like that! I'll see you pay for that! Sure. Sorry guys, I had a call. Someone the fucking blight. Run, run, thank you. Yet. I think the president felt I was supposed to kill him in combat. Oh, um, let's see what happens. Oh, shit. Mm hmm. Can't deal with this. My character can't deal with this now. Part of his sleeping memories of people that drawing up on the part uh, and on all of his or her attributes. Watch and what's the essence of getting endurance in the process. 
Oh, I think uh, I still do better damage on this. Yes. Oh, she's gonna kill me. She's definitely gonna kill me. Reflection, exceptional shield, converting crits, converts. Okay, I'll go to him. Sure. Okay. Yeah. This guy is <laughs> <he's> so fucking ugly. <laughs> Ooh, retaining some. Brings a powerful storm into being, striking the random single tog, single enemy in the area of effect periodically with bolt of lightning and that stun and deal shock damage to third level druid spell. Uh, oh, it's spell mastery. The force of the paladin can destroy any spirit or summoned creature below the paladin's level. The paladin focuses on it. Focus his oil fire and self emulates in a blue flame each time the ability pulses. The paladin takes a small amount of raw damage, but the enemies in the area take burn damage. Allies received receive a small amount of endurance. That's actually quite cool. Uh, inspires. Urgency in one of the pallet's allies increasing his or her attack speed. Uh, the paladin fights perfect synergy with the closest ally, attacking the same foe, providing the ally with an accuracy bonus. Challenges for the paladin and his uh, allies with unshakable confidence, increasing the damage reduction, converting a portion of his incoming. He cannot be active with other zealous auras. Reinforce exhaustion commands an ally to redouble the efforts, improving their deflection. Sworn enemy, Mark's enemy as the paladins. Commands an ally to summon all their strength in order to temporarily. I think I like this one. What does that? Yes. yes. Hey there. Okay. Let's steal everything. Sure. This calls for a subtle touch. Give me a real challenge. And then see what happens if we exit. Consider it done. There. What did I tell you? If we're under attack the second we exit here, I'm reloading. It's hard save. Then load the quick save. Load the quick save. Then hard save this. Wow. Then we load the other game.
And I know boys spelled wrong. Okay. Sure. Now, let's go to these uh, blood shits. The fuck you want? You have stayed true to our cause, Inquisitor, when so many others have not. For every heretic we confess, for every betrayer that burns on our pyres. New sheep continue to flock to Ivara Exensios. But not you. I underestimated you in the beginning. But no longer. You honor me, Grand Inquisitor. It is not for honor that I summoned you today, but for duty. Too many of our own have confessed upon the wheel and the rack and the flame. Too many of our faithful have had their minds poisoned by the Kratom Witch. The tide is against us now. We have but one option. Yavara's following must see her exposed for what she is. She must confess her heresy before my court. How would we reach her? Not in Kratom, surely. Their lord has embraced her heathen faith and protects her with his army. But in Osionis, things would be different. The king of Osionis is a sinful man. We have helped him to see the error of his ways, and now he fears for his soul. He would pay any price for absolution. How will we get Yavara to move to the to Osiomas? You have already done much for the Inquisition. I wouldn't ask this were there any other choice. <sighs> the fuck are you? Two identical women seem to fade into view as they move away from the great trees standing uh, that camouflage them. Their skin is tree bark, rigid and scaly, uh, wreathed in a curling tangle of roots, buds, and blossoms. Their hair hangs beneath the shade of serrated leaves, like the drooping branches of the elms above, and the pupils of their eyes are encreded by hundreds of or even thousands of concentrated uh, concentric rings, as if to mark an accumulated. Wisdom of millennia. Turn around, flesh creature. Outsiders are not permitted to approach the elms. Do you not feel it, sister? Something familiar. An ancient soul, like the other one. Another defiler, no doubt. Let us fell him and be troubled no more. We would pay the debt of his predecessor. Hmm, so it would seem, Rhiannon. But we must not hasten to judgment. I see a different motive here. Different questions in these eyes. What of it, young trespasser? Is it as my sister says? Or are you here to stain this place with foul deeds? I seek the man who came through here. It sounds like it sounds as though you have already met him. I'd be at accommodation here yeah, and came to this. There! By his own admission, Sheetha. Really, sister. And you wonder why your leaves begin to fall out before midsummer. Clearly that man did not want to be followed. Whatever the relationship here, I suspect it is anything but cordial. The answer is yes, old one. We crossed paths with Theos not long ago, and we can tell you where he went. But I find it curious that anyone would seek him out. Suspicious even. If we are to help you find him, we would know why. I have a problem and he's the only one can fix ah, it. So you do. I should have seen it when you first approached. <sighs> we are slipping in our advanced age, sister. I see it now. You are awakened. Your soul is awake and something once buried deep now wells to the surface. Past overwhelms present, closes in around you. Your time has nearly reached its end. I just need to get to Theos. I'm sorry to tell you this, but Theos cannot give you what you seek. Nor can any man. An awakening cannot be undone any more than your past can be undone. 
What you mean? I thought maybe we'll see. Those places, Richard. This is permanent. We did not come down this road together to be refused patches by a pair of talking saplings. Let it show. There must be, so be some way. So this has all been for nothing and I'm going to lose my mind. The soul is formless without a past to shape it. Did you truly expect to be able to wipe it away? No, but I'd hoped it would be something I could forget. A mercy to be sure, but how can you grant mercy to a soul that has already judged itself guilty? However, as much as my sister speaks truly that there is no way back from an awakening, there may yet be a way forward. Would you agree, Shiva? I would. Were the way not so likely to end in death. Ooh, what is it? The man Theos, you must already know by now. You are linked by a common past. Something about it lingers within you, festering, unresolved. What it is, I cannot see any more than you. And without that knowledge, your doom is certain. But were you to learn the source of this discord, perhaps it could be put to rest. Though it is equally possible it will trouble you as much now as it did then, and merely speed your condition to its end. My past comes to me in pieces. How do I unlock the rest? You might wait for it to come on its own, of course. But when it comes, it will replace your sanity's last breath. Such is the nature of your condition. Or you could learn it from someone who already knows. Tales, what do you remember? It is said the gods made his memory perfect. That he may never forget his charge. If he ever knew, he still does. Not that he would tell you, of course. You have followed the right person for the wrong reason, it seems. We see it often beneath the elms. The soul dragging mind and body to unknown places for unfathomable reasons. You may have wandered into Theos' path many times, in many lifetimes, without an awakening to show you why. The only thing that's certain is you did not find what you sought. You said you know where, to, where he went. He has gone down beneath the tower to a place older than we, where the people of Engwith once walked. He makes his way to the buried city, Sun and Shadow. May he stay down there and rot with the remains of his people. He may yet. He won't be returning the way he came, that much is certain. He opened a secret path in the tower's base and saw it destroyed behind him through some vile means. Is there another way to get to him? We know of one. On the burial aisle, through the court of the penitents, Brayeth Yaman. A shortcut, in fact. Don't be cruel, sister. The way my sister speaks of is not for the faint of heart. A great pit at the center of a forgotten court, where faiths were judged in place of crimes. To most, it is simply a gateway to death. With the help of the gods, it can take you where you want to go. What do you mean with the help of the gods? The pit is said to have been a means of judgment by the gods. Those cast into it are meant to die. It is that way you must pass to reach Sun and Shadow. The court is old. We do not know much for certain, but it would seem only the gods themselves can grant passage. What is the court? No more than a ruin now. It is older than we, a place for the trial of heretics. We were not here to witness it, but at one time there was a group that refused to acknowledge the gods. Neither the first nor the last, of course, but these were numerous and all put on trial for it. Those who did not repent were cast into the pit and imprisoned below. The fall killed them, of course. The prison was not for people, but for their souls, and their sentences were eternal. It is said that many of the condemned repented and were permitted by the gods to ascend from the pit, so long as they pledged their service to one of them. But these are old legends. How could I ever get the gods to help me? Behind us is Ter Evron, said to pierce the shroud itself and a place of communion with all gods. If ever there was a time for prayer, you have found it. So the only way to get help, to get through this pit, is to pray for help. Not the only way. Just the only one that doesn't end with your body impaled on jagged rocks. Who would I pray to? 
If any god you can, I should I think. would pray first to those gods you like best. I hope for your sake, the feeling is shared. Is there no other way? None. How do I pray? Ter Evron is also called the Hall of Stars, and the stars show us the allegiances of the gods. When stars are in conjunction, we know the gods they represent are aligned as well. You should choose a place to pray where you'll be closest to those you want to hear you. If a god stands alone, you should pray to that god. If they band together, you should address them all. Choose your words wisely, for all gods expect proper homage, and none has patience for fools. I have other questions. What do you wish to know? I heard you know I was pursuing Thayos. The same way that you are no doubt able to peer into the ether and experience the souls of others. It is something we are born with, some more, some less. A gift common to many creatures of the wilds. You share certain similarities with the man you pursue. For your sake, I pray they are few and of no consequence. You mentioned that people come to the come to these elms without knowing why. The soul has a will of its all, all of the soul has a will all its own. Its ne its need of whims are seldom understood, but they follow them all the same. There is something about this place that reaches beyond our understanding. Something like a beacon. The elms have a way of uniting souls that have been seeking one another, with or without their owner's awareness. Sometimes it is for love, sometimes for vengeance, sometimes for peace. Often it is for no reason we will ever know. In your case, let us hope it is for peace. Or vengeance. I want to know more about, I want to know about the two of you. There is little to be said about us, for we are bound here. Caretakers and defenders of this place. Our journey has been over time, but not distance. Measured in observations, but not experiences. We have seen the elms grow tall. We have seen cities built, burned, and built again. The only constant has been the tower. A silent companion through the ages. You can imagine why this recent destruction has stirred my sister so. If you do nothing else, make that man pay for what he did here. No, I, w I need to know about praying for the support of the gods. We will tell you what we can. Before you go, tell me this, old one. I'm curious. If you were to subdue your enemy, what would you do with him? What would give you peace? I won't know until I get there. I need to understand our history so it may be put to rest, nothing more. He must be destroyed. I would return him to the wheel of life and death so he may be... They may trouble me no more. I wish to undo the harm he he's caused. I would set him to a better path. I would take his place and power for myself. I'm going to go with five. I wish to undo the harm he caused. You would need to have twice as many lifetimes as he to repair his savage work. Or perhaps they are strides you can All make. the same. Think on this matter. Be assured in your course. In the end, it may mean all the difference, not just to his soul but to yours. And be warned. Some questions have answers that can never be learned. And it is those that trouble the soul above all others. May you find an answer to yours. Goodbye, Felicia. Dimensional shift. A dwarf man stands motionless near the roaring fire of 
that lights the cabin. Your sacrifice feeds the land. Supplicants come forth. A gust of smoke curls around him, licking the charred flesh that bulges on his forearms. Ugh. Suddenly flexes Estramor. The dwarf holds his fist in a tight grip. Your kin does, doesn't come here to share with the tribe. What do you want? What's this place? Blood sands. The dwarf picks, his, uh, picks on his scarred forearm. His guttural sigh mingles with the crackling of wood and bones behind him. As I said, Estramor rarely visit our halls. The Glenfarthens call this place Blood Sands. We call it home, the Ethic Knoll. Have tended the land from within this cave since before the arrival of the tribes of Twin Alps. Garost crosses his arm. Be warned, Estramor, we bleed life to nurture it. Our sacrifice. Our sacrifices may strike you as savage, but the health of our of these lands depends on them, and it's unseemingly for guests to insult their host. Tell me about these sacrifices. Harold spreads his stocky legs apart and locks his forearms. Everything must die to return and use to more. Through the sacrifice rites, sacrificial rites, we offer supplicants the honor of grieving, uh, giving their most precious gifts back to their brethren, back to their land. The dwarf lifts his first thick, uh, thick and malted by red scars. The blood gives us strength. Even the Glenfarthens have come to depend on the blood paint. They brim, they brim with power before battle, all thanks to the sacrifice of their kin. Tell me about the Ethic Null. Our order has thrived in generations before we came to Twin Alps. Our rites fed the lands and the, of the eastern mountains. Now we share blood with the Glenfarth. Garros opens the palm, strikes of the red skin, runs them like flames. To everything that must that must end, our sacrifice bring a new beginning. He looks up. We sustain what's to come. Remember, as more, you're a guest in the halls. Respect our ways and we'll tolerate your presence among us. How big is this? The elderly dwarf blinks at you, not quite looking at you. Her eyes are pale and clouded with our cataracts. Welcome to Bloodstands. It's rare to see an Estramor set foot in these caverns. Her sightless eyes fix on you as she tilts her head. What brings you here, I wonder? What do you do here? I saw the maintain goods for the preservation of our order, and I perform some of our ritual sacrifices. Something, something more. Um, I'd like to see what you have for sale. Potion, potion. Okay. This is a, a druid's grove. Not very friendly to druids, but. There's something you don't see. Arch Druid. As your blood flows, so shall your essence. Your life's energy shall feed the soil and your soul's energy shall enrich the community. This is by your own choosing, supplicant? Yes, the owl's voice is high but even. The dwarven grips a hatchet with both hands and raises it over his head. He throws the bloody shoulders towards the swing, the weapon into the elf's chest, conducting with a meaty thump. Blood gushes around the table and the sacrifice screams rend the air. Both lips curl in disgust. This is why I prefer the wand to the blade. Despite the earlier agreement, the elf thrashes atop the stone table, his torso watching, watching while his uh, arms and legs remain tied up in place. Meanwhile, the door spreads his arms wide and allows blood to splatter his robes. When the elf is finally silent and still, the dwarf pulls the hatchet from the body and wipes it on his hem. Fucking sicko. 
dwarf wears crimson robes that are stained with uh, streaked with blood patches. His face is smooth but lacking youthful elasticity. It is as if the lines and wrinkles have been formed and erased many times. Uh, you watch as you with eyes like two black pits as he wipes his hatchet on his robes. Hail is No one comes to Blood Sands without a purpose. What is yours? Wait. I am the Archdruid of the Ethic Null. For centuries it has been my duty to guide our rituals and guard our knowledge. It is work that requires a certain resilience, but it is not without its benefits. Tell me more about Ethic Null. We are, druid, we are a druidic order that has been in the Twin Elms of the Gwithin times. Our founders came from the White March, seeking a place where we might practice our beliefs in peace as it were. Unlike most of the Glen Farson's brethren, we seek answers to in the world around us rather than in the teaching of the gods. We believe that all life has power and that, the, that this power can be siphoned and conducted. We are not, uh, as some suggest, madmen and murderers. All of our rituals are conducted with willing participants and no methods that have been tested and, re and refined over centuries. He nods, his black eyes shining. This allows us to create the war paint for which we are respected if not loved. I want to know more about the sacrifices. A guttural love rambles from his thoughts. We merely believe that in giving up something of value, the energy from the sacrifice can be div diverted elsewhere. It is not so different from what folk practice all over the world. If you want to turn the soil, so sail a ship, or move a cart, you must expend energy. He smooths his rose, but we're best known for the uh, practice of kith sacrifice. This is the most potent form of sacrifice because it releases the most energy. We distill the essence as of an entire, entire soul into raw power that can strengthen the body, fortify the soul, and extend the life. What's war paint? A special unguent binding raw essence to the wearer. If it grants incredible advantages in combat and has made an, us un, indispensable to the tribes, whatever they say about our practice, almost all of them have made us made use of our war paint at some time or another. A slow smile spreads across his face. Fascinating indeed how the most strident objections can overcome circumstances. Um, how are you different from the Ovates of the Golden Grove? A dry laugh for us with a Golden Grove. I remember when Arona came up with the name. He gives you a dark, darkly greeny look. Used to be as green as the rest of the forest, you know. We're mo more similar than they think, than they'd like to, and we both believe in achieving power without the double edged aid of the gods. But their fantasy is pure creation, something from nothing. They blind themselves to the fact that all life, from the mightiest dragon to the slimiest blade of grass, requires death, and the gra uh, greatest ends require the greatest sacrifice. An interesting thought, though. I'll have to ponder it further. A wise enough sentiment. I'd like to buy war paint. I'm no merchant human talk to keep a warder shears around here somewhere. You murdered that man, Plymouth. Your simplistic morals do not apply here. Estremore murder does not enter into it. It was a sacrifice, and one willingly entered into. The survival of all things depends on balance. Give and take. The principle lies at the heart of all power. Expending something of value it releases energy. Energy that can be in channeled by those who know who know how. He tilts his head toward you. All Keith, whether or they whether or not they care to admit it, practice this. We take the yield of the land and the flesh of the beast to live. And we give our blood and sweat to the to propagate the things we desire. It sounds brutal. The word is brutal, nothing is gained by closing one's eyes against it. Better to recognize these realities than that they might better this serve you. Farewell. Um, I'm not getting like that. Removing another clan from this tribe, from this place. Keeper, light, supplicant. Isn't this something? Keep going, keep going. Oh, this is 
start like a The petitioner before you is swaddled in loose-fitting robes, her hair is greasy and matted. A glossy foam of sweat and grime co coats her exposed skin. She has the swollen fruits of, of pregnancy and several missing teeth in her big grooming smile. As you approach, she slowly turns to you and examines you from head to toe, smiling the ever entire joyous day to you, she says, despite coming from a weird, a worried body. Her voice sounds resonated and relaxed. I'm Naka, midwife and law keeper. Her hands run across the slight bulge in her belly. She rolls her head back and says, a relaxed purr. Are you feeling well? Flawless, she replies. Apologies, I should be left to, be, to my meditation. The right of strength is in a, in invigorating, almost overwhelming to the senses. She reaches down and cradles her belly in her hands and turns away. Um, okay. What is this? What is Yeah? Uh... Hey there. What? Okay. And then we had a secret Entrance, yeah. And a trap. Hey there. Easy does it. Give me a real challenge. Give me a real challenge. Oh, yes, not me, is that thing? Um, what did we just get? We got the, we got one of those, we got gloves. Testament. He's for my monk. Oh. Hey there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I need to go in there, but I'm not gonna go in there now. Just gonna explore the rest of Penals. Shrine, Old Song Pass, Windfrost, Burial Isle. Ooh, there's the entrance to the Burial Isle. Malay, Malawain's Mall, Old Song District, Old Song District. Uh, so this is what basically. So it's basically these three maps, and then there's that one, and then it's back to the White Marsh. Oh. Almost the end of the game, like I said. Anyway, guys, um, that's going to be it for today. Um, we are closing to the end of the game now. 
to the end of Pillars of Eternity 1. Then we will do the two expansions, Mar White Marsh Part 1. So basically we just need to go into Durgan's Battery, do Durgan's Battery, come out to Stalwart. But before that we want to hand in all the quests that we can for now. Um, I missed... I missed stuff. So I'm going to have to re-explore some of these places. Like uh, saving the wolf, the werewolf and things like that. I need to... I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in one of these two maps. Um, so I need to figure that out. And then... Yes, we are done. But in the next episode, we will explore Old Song. And then, if there's enough time, we will go to Northwed. Northweld. That's where we have um, another side quest north of Twin Elms. I think it's one of the companion quests that we can do. Okay. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and have a fantastic day.